That's why I think it's important to watch what you do around kids. Ah, uh, that's a that's a fact. Because what you do around kids or what you do around your child, they see that. Yeah. No matter what it is, no matter it's what you say, say. do. You ain't trippin' so with the smiths, man, you slippin' Get an educate you, yeah, you don't know what you missin' Sports taste The belt that's inside of me that I haven't And I was thinking about that today Like, not, like I'm not there yet Like, it's, some, it's something that Sports taste great to be Yeah, they trendin' To trip and rave family All day So yo, Welcome to Trippin' with the Smiths the first, the first episode. Yeah, the first episode. <laughs> Tripping with, with the Smiths. Smiths. Um, I'm your co-host Ray Smith. I'm Sarah Smith. I'm we. I, I'm just happy right now. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna right. lie, but I'm I'm happy. Right, right. So right. family, education, sports, education. Right. And so say that again. Family. Right. Family. Sports. Sports. Education. It's something Education. that literally I've been talking about. Like, Raymond, I, I want to start a podcast. And he was like, well, let's do it. Right. You always been like, let's do it. And I've been like, uh, uh, uh. And I was like, no, let's start. Right. And I remember. And, and the thing about me is, like, I have, I don't really have patience. You have patience. She so right. was like, but Sarah, let's not put that. And I was like, no, nope, I'm just doing it. Like, right now, we just winging it. That's just. That's just what we do. Yeah, this is the first episode. We really don't have an agenda set for today, but we're going to just give you a little bit about ourselves and just what we're trying to do. Yeah. So family is important to me. Um, I'm an only child, um, okay. raised in a, a middle-class family. Mom's a social worker. Dad worked in um plant warehouse, um, come from a loving home. Um, my parents, my family mean the world to me. Sports mean a lot. Um, I always played sports growing up. Um, got into golf from my grandfather. God rest his soul. She's a golf scholarship oh, athlete. Here we go. I want to make that clear. She's not a regular golfer. Okay. Okay. He, he, also he a basketball tell, player. He love to tell people that when we get out in public, she played golf. I call her, oh, oh, so what's your handicap? So then I have to get all into that. Like yeah, I was her caddy, you know. <laughs> One I was, time. I was in the sun. I was. I don't remember that. <laughs> it was hot. It was sweaty. They didn't give me a golf court. A golf golf cart. cart. And I just had to walk around with that heavy bag. But you hey, supported me. And you I did. That's really, all for my baby. E so. Even when you knew you was about to be in trouble when you got home. Why are we talking about that? I know, but I just had to. You still supported me. I did. You supported me, too. We support each other. That's what you're supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, so. that is what you're supposed to do. But um, I played golf, played basketball. And um, I wouldn't have started golf without my grandpa. He put me out there. We would get into arguments. I would be with his friends. It was Mr. Cole, God rest his soul, sweetest man. When me and my grandpa would get into it on the golf course, my grandpa was type A. Whatever he thought he was going to say. So if I played horrible, he was going to let me know I played horrible and cuss me out. That was, that, that was my grandpa. I mean, you know my grandpa, but he loved me to death. And his, his buddy, Mr. Cole, was always there to um, say, it's okay, Sarah. You know how your grandpa is. but. Right. It's okay, and um, that that's just very tight with my grandparents. And education, I education. Always, so, what do you do now, Sarah? Like, what so, in the education? I don't field? know. My title. I laugh with my principal because we really don't know what my title is. Is it a social worker? Is it a family engagement facilitator? Is it a behavior intervention? It's all in one. But I love M and Elementary. I love my job. Um, good people. Um, I love the students. They they keep me grounded, right. and every, I always have to get. I probably get five hundred hugs a day. Right. And I love to rib them up, and especially just, in elementary school, I'm, I imagine it's a lot of hugs, a lot of. It's a lot of hugs. Drawings. I, like, like when I get home, bad drawings probably. Yeah. What? But yeah. Wait, really? You have to say it. But yeah, it's a lot of drawings. But yeah. what about you, Mister Corporate the Education? Uh, <laughs> Well, right now, I'm a 8th grade English teacher, 7th grade creative writing teacher. 
um, coaching middle school football. How's coaching. that? Like, what's what? How how is that been? It's been it's been pretty good, you know. Just giving back to the community, giving the kids knowledge of the game that I've been through. You know, we, we had a pretty successful year. Went seven and zero. Oh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? One out division I'll championship. The championship. They, uh, they're pretty impressive. Yeah. They so, are very good. Yeah, yeah. They definitely got some Sparmer edition one. They they definitely got some cats coming up. So it's gonna be I'm glad to see them. Also coach girls basketball, you know. And those them girls, you, Dude, they they all time. Different, different, different. Those uh great players, those are my girls, you know. Uh they definitely gonna be great ball players as well. And just let's talk about women's basketball in general. Like the girls basketball, women's basketball is on the rise. Yeah. Um you see the talent, you see the Angela Reese's, you see the Caitlin Clarks coming in balling, making this money in college. So I'm a big advocate of women's basketball. Um been coaching that since twenty eighteen, all the way to girls to now but let me tell so, you something like now i feel like you was a fan of girls basketball but you weren't really a fan fan until you start coaching Tampa bella gremlin girls basketball like because i'd be like right now you you went but now it's like you there right right i mean i mean you gotta think about it i mean you, i'm a man let's be honest yeah. and i typically will watch man sports so i really didn't pay a lot of attention to a lot of women's basketball Quality, yeah. until i got into it and i saw it's a lot of game it's a lot of iq and that's all the stuff i love about basketball so yeah i am a fan you know i'm trying to catch a don stanley camp take my girls down there you know try to get them some skills and some tips and you know just expand my knowledge so yeah i'll give you that and I, I, you know, girls basketball has always been important to me. From the time I went to um, Gino Ariema's basketball camp at uh, UConn, like it, it's funny because I got to tell the story. Okay. I got to tell the tell the story to the people. So we was at I was at UConn's girls basketball camp, and he gets up. Gino is a very arrogant person. Okay. That's People, a, he's nah, very arrogant, but bold, I like him. That's a bold statement, yeah, though. He is we're, we're, trying, we're trying to get on the podcast. He can be arrogant here. because he's the real deal. Okay. But, so this little girl, she he picks her out of the crowd, and she, he says, are you good? And she said, yeah, I'm good. He said, well, how do you know you good? She said, because my mama told me, I was good. He said, who the hell is your mama, Pat Summit? Wow. At that moment, I'm like. What a statement. I'm like, what? And then the crowd just starts laughing because they know it's Gino Ariema. Yeah. But co- I will always basketball. tell that story about Gino Ariema. That's Ariema. college basketball. That's college basketball. Yeah, that's, you, gotta, I, you gotta keep it real with these parents. The thing about coaching, you can't sugarcoat stuff with these parents. You gotta be real. You know, uh, just a person in the community was uh, Timmy Go. Timmy go, he got a lot of barber shots in Spartanburg <laughs> County, and uh, we both Here we, go this we both coach at Macedonia, right? Yeah. So we just you know giving giving back time to the community, and we had these kids dribbling. Yeah. And he stopped the practice. He brought all the parents to the stands and made every kid dribble. And you could see the kids who were skillful. Right. And you saw the kids who was underskilled. Yeah. And he said, parents, I just wanted y'all to see this and see how terrible it is because y'all need to work on this at home. So, if players, if you listen to this, it's not about what you do inside of practice. It's what you do outside of practice that's going to make you a great ball player. I, so, you're right. You need that, that I guess, arrogance of a no, coach. No, I, 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 I believe when you came home and you said, Sarah, that's what I'm a – what you say? I'm going to tell my girls that. I'm going to tell them the truth. Like that. I said, well, Mr. Timmy Go, it's different. Okay, yeah. yeah he <laughs> he an got, entrepreneur, he and we both got, in education. He got a lot it's of years in the game. now that we can't be – when we were being coached, coaches were that brutal. They just told the truth. Now it's like if you tell a kid something, you kind of got to watch what you say. Yeah. You got to watch how you say it. Uh, they but, might start crying. And I, for and the I, most part, it's okay though if they cry. Yeah, it's I mean. a, and, and crying, I feel like crying is important. I don't want people to think that crying is not important. It's an emotion. Yeah, it's emotion. And it's uh, important, yeah. but you still got to know. You still got to be a coach, exactly. though. Because that's what the parents want you to do, especially kids so, that get coddled. If if kids get coddled at home, they definitely want their kids to be coached hard at practice. So, I mean, I, I agree, son. But in my experience, they want me to coach them hard. Yeah, shout out Camp and Bella Gramlin. The parents there are different. 
Yeah, yeah. As far as the girls. And shout out to Mabry, too. I ain't going to leave out my home school. Shout out to Mabry. Shout out to Mabry. Ken Brother Grandma definitely give them a shout out. But yeah, all District 1. Yeah. They balling. I respect. Uh, you know, D6, too. D6, you know what I'm saying? They, that's, they made that's us. That's our roots. They, they definitely made us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Shout out to Jesse Bobo. Shout out to Fair Forest Middle School. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Fair shout out to Dorman High School. Dorman High School, for sure. But, y'all, we just happy to, to finally get on this podcast right. and um we we our, our name is tripping with the smiths because and we did this because our son trip he is almost he he's at that he's almost two he's 20 months and he's at yep. that terrible two stage yeah terrible twos and horrible <laughs> no no that's Out what he says <laughs> throwing stuff throw, hitting people it's just and I'm like, and you try to gentle parenting, but it's, it can only go so far. You keep on trying. Like, what you think? I, I'm still gonna choose that. My mama was like, Sarah, how? My mama is old school, so her her thing is pop his butt. Okay. But I, I'm not ready for that. I haven't done it yet either. I'm not. And the thing about Trip is, if I do, I have pop like this. Oh, I ain't know that. And he let, yeah. I have. He oh. laughed at me. Oh. But when, when I, I did, did like, like this, mm-hmm. he kind of, he put his head down in, in shame and disappointment. So, I, I'm not ready to pop yet. Oh. That, okay. I do, I am going to get to that point because what well, just depends on what he responds to the best. Right, right. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to try to do the stern talking to, take away things, you know. But right now, I think it's unreasonable to to try to. Make an agreement with a two year old. So I agree, I agree. Yeah. Um, he he just he's super witty. I can say that for him being, he knows it. He he's our world, and I always said I wanted one child, and I wanted a boy. Right. God. Yeah. God blessed us for sure. God blessed us with him, and y'all didn't tell us how expensive these kids are. They're too expensive. I. We got one daycare, diapers, formula, toys. No, formula, formula was ridiculous. Formula alone, so many diapers. It's mm, onesies, he really can, clothes. He, he really can be daycare right now because he's enjoyment. <laughs> literally enjoyment. Um, oh. car seats. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Is that all taxable? Can we put it on the taxes? Or? Daycare. Yeah. But Pampers. Formula, mm. no, that we went through. That's tough. You think you should you should be able to put like vacation on the tax? Oh yeah, which, for sure, which, for sure. But it's just like, oh, it it never ends. Like today, I was like, oh snap, Raymond, we gotta hurry up and pay the registration fee uh, for next year. Right. And I'm like, uh, and then we had to pay the pictures. From, for spring pictures, and I'm like, when does it ever end? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's a, like a never, never stopping bill for the rest of your life. So I talked about my family. How was your, how was your upbringing? Oh, my upbringing was great. You know, born in a military base. Shout out Norfolk, Virginia. You know what I'm saying? So you was born, or, born, born, born. You know, moved down to Emmett, South Carolina. Was up in there a little bit in the country. To move back to the Berg. You know, in the city, you know, a little bit, you know, uh, middle class family, military dad, you know, mom had a great job as well. Uh, yeah, left my school, leading the all time leader in Russia. Okay, football, okay, okay. My favorite RB of all time. College, graduated my bachelor's in English studies, you know, got into the corporate world, professional recruiter, you know what I'm saying? Aerotech. <laughs> Then I went to Amazon as a university recruiter over Southeastern schools and HBCU schools, you know, doing resume builders, trying to get freshly uh, freshly graduated students to become area managers, work health safety specialists, or senior human resources. That was a great time. Facebook started calling, went to Facebook, started working on the metaverse, working with product managers. Uh, definitely take a great breath, time. Take a breath, take a breath. But got caught up in the tech layoff, you know. It was a bad time. A lot of people in tech were getting laid off. I got caught up and uh, just want to get away from corporate. So uh, my wife, Sarah, here actually got me an opportunity at District 1. And Shout out to Mr. Smith. Hodge and, and uh, Shout Dr. Out to Smith. Mr. Hodge they, and Dr. Smith. They don't like to – he don't like for us to call him Dr. Smith. So 
Mark Smith. Mark Smith. You know I, what I'm saying? I, I really, what, what a real one. I, I really know? appreciate both of them. Both of them are I know I always say that um Mr. Hodge is like my work dad. Yeah. And I respect him and a lot. He gives me feedback. Some of the stuff I don't I don't like, but I listen to and I take it in and right. he's just solid. Like I I give him hell sometimes, but he he's solid and I feel like you need that work dad, that work mom, you know, oh, yeah. that's gonna For sure. You need that person in your corner, regardless of what industry you're in. You're in corporate, education, sales, government. As long as you got that one person that could be a rock and they sometimes gotta be empowered, that's that's definitely a great asset to have in the world, you know. Cause too many people out here are who are haters that'll try to bring you down. Well long as you stay true, go to work every day, got that one person in your corner, you should be straight. I, I agree. And that's and I, I not, I'm not trying to get mushy right now, but that's why I appreciate you. Like, our our hashtag at our wedding was middle school to matrimony. Of course, we had time off, but at the end of the day, I can sit beside you and be on my phone and feel connected. All right, same here, man. Like, and that means a lot. That I, I know I can I can have a rough day. And I can say, wow, I'm going home to, to my son and my husband. And mm. and that means what Monique do when she looked in the camera. Look at me, people. <laughs> look at me. That that means look at the camera. Look at the camera. <laughs> that that means a lot though. Yeah. That that genuinely, genuinely means a lot that I have somebody at home that's in my corner that loves me. Not only my husband, but no matter that trip is in a terrible twos. When I pick him up from daycare, he says, mommy, mommy, with the biggest smile on his face. Right. You know? And I, and I could say as a man, too, as you get older, I mean, especially you hit your 30s, only thing you really care about it is your, your family, man. You want to make an easier pathway for your child, put them in the best schools, put them in the best program, eating a great food for your wife. You want to make sure that she's in a comfortable environment, stable environment. So, I mean, that's the point I'm reaching to in my life. And, um, yeah, man, just working every day to try to make y'all lives better, you know. And that's the only thing that's really my priority. So, yeah, man, definitely feel the love for sure. And you got to have a want to in life. Like, what's your purpose? What's your passion? Uh, you find out what it is. And it's so. just that when you find out, I feel like what your, what your passion is, I, I I feel like I found it, but I feel like it's more. Like, I, I got so, it's something else that's inside of me that I haven't. And I was thinking about that today, like, I'm not like I'm not there yet. Oh, no, no. Like it's something. It's something that I have. Like I love. Like I love to talk to people. I love to meet new people. I I love to um. Like like you said one day you was like Terry you genuinely love talking to people. I do. She do. She do. She don't stop talking once it's <laughs> once a hey, once you come to that faucet on. Gonna be hell and hot water to that faucet off. She gonna keep her going. We wake up in the morning talking. That's definitely your son for sure. He love talking. You love talking. Y'all both like saying no. That's your favorite word. So I mean, all of that. Don't say that. Yeah, throw that away. But yeah, though, like, but it's the gift of jab, dude. Like a lot of people like pay classes and go like overseas and stuff to learn to become a better speaker, and you just born with that. So I'll count that as a blessing. But that's my family. Hey, shout out to Seek. Hey, big shout out to Seek, man. CK. So, I'm going to be transparent for a moment. All right, go ahead, dog. Me and Seek, we done clap, but he lo he his love for people, like for me he and for family. Bro. Quiet storm, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to the good, bro. Oh, yeah. Is unreal. And when I called him, I was like, hey, I need a jingle. Right. He said, I, I'm working on it. He made it in 48 hours, I want to say. Or it was less. literally. Or less. And you mean a lot to me. I've never said, I, I don't even think I've said that to you personally, but you do. Hey. You, Your heart. He came up with multiple jingles for our, for our business. For, our pet, yeah, Mr. Our Bernie. Mr. Bernie business. Shout out, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Seat, man. Mr. Bernie Trees, you know? 
came yeah. through. Licking the cat. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. Hey, make sure y'all look at his album too on Apple Music. Amazing. Trust me. Trust you know me. It's out. It's, I'm, it's I'm up proud there. of Upload you. Upload it. You drop music. Call him for events. He gonna pull up on you. You know, grill some chicken, some steak, lobster. You know what I'm saying? He does it all. The grill ma- the grill master. The grill and proud bros. of you. Thank you. Popping bros, singing bros. <laughs> oh, go ahead. I'm done. Right, baby. Yeah, shout out to bros. Shout I'm done. Bros. Shout out to the bros. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the AKs. <laughs> Real tall. Tall Delta. <laughs> <laughs> Since we give it shout outs. Um, yeah, but. Yeah, man. Shout out to you. Spring Sister. 17. Oh, fall 14, dog. What you I mean? could thin it. so. All right, I'm, I'm done. All right, see. <laughs> People ask me, like, hey, like, how was it being the only child? I had Mouse and Sonny that was, like, literally my brothers. And Mouse, we're close in age. So then I had my dad's side, who I was, like, really, really close with was Shauna, Nikki, and Jerry. I mean, I mean, it's so many cousins on my dad's side of the family. I can't even be- begin. To- Adrian, we was close in age. But and she, Adrian's the only child, too. So it, I can't even begin to, like, say how many cousin is on that side but we were all really close so I never felt like I was literally only child and my mom always had um my family and my friends close so it it just it just worked out like my mom was the type of person was like yeah tell them come on over like and I appreciated that do you think that got anything with her being a social worker just her being able to you know what Raymond and helping people wow so I was at Chick-fil-A Everybody knows I worked at Chick-fil-A From summer of my ninth grade year Until I was like Graduated from college This woman comes, comes through the line And she sees my name tag She says Sarah I say yes ma'am Yes ma'am She says I just want to cry right now Your mom Gave Christmas to my my two kids and she used to bring you over to our house and you used to play with my kids and she always told me I was going to be something in life and I, I do think that came from that stem from that's my mom a, that's a, shout she, out to Miss Honey you know? she, my mom is type A sometimes she I'm like mama you doing too much you just you doing too much right now, but she's she has a heart of I, I don't even know. Like I, I think about y'all's relationship. Right, right. I know a lot of a lot of sometimes men complain about their mother in laws, but I got no complaints. Miss Hunter always been good to me from uh, uh, give me professional clothes for my for first. Oh, now she about clothes now. She she gone. Reading back to kids when I was in college, we'd come down to Cleveland. Then when we was elementary, when school, we was was the Cleveland elementary. Yeah, school. that's when I wasn't talking to you. And I read back to the kids. <laughs> Look at that. So just uh, from from all that, man, Miss Hunter always been about the community, giving back. So I mean, that rubbed off on me as well, and um, hopefully many others. So yeah, big shout out to Miss Hunter for sure. Yeah, she. I think, and she used to always say, "I like, Mama, I think I want to be, be in the school system." And she used to say, "No, I, I want more for you." But when you grow up, like when you're around something your whole life, and you see somebody doing something, that's why I, I think it's important to watch what you do around kids. Ah, uh, that's a that's a fact. Because what you do around kids, or what you do around your child. They see that. Yeah. No matter what it is, no matter it's what you say, say, do, do. They they know. They I mean know. they're they're like sponges. So yeah. me seeing my mom go to the projects, do home visits, 
come home, sometimes cry because something happened that she didn't agree with. That stuck with me. And that made me know. Because she always would say, I want you to make more money. I want you to do something different. You deserve more than this. But that's what I saw, right? Yeah. Like, I, I saw my mom. I don't know. Like I, when it comes to my mom and dad and my family, like that's and my friends, and and I think that's why. I don't know. Like that's and and I care so much about my kids at at work, right. and so the education aspect, right? That's what we um, transitioned. Yeah, transition because I, I'm getting a little so, emotional so over Sarah, here. So Sarah, like, how do you feel about the climate? Of education nowadays, I'm, you're at the elementary level. I'm at the middle school level, so I'm pretty sure we're seeing different things, but also we're probably seeing similar things. So, how do you feel about the education right now in our youth? I don't know. I I'm at a loss for words. Which <laughs> I'm I think that it starts with parenting. Okay. And it's, it's no, it's no manual God though to be. A good it's player. not. It's hard, but at the same time, don't expect us to be the parents. That is true. But if you do expect me to be the parent, make sure you back me up. Don't come in the in the office and flip up and you know you want to show out for your kid because you want to. Out of everybody in the world, you want to show your kid you got their back. But at the end of the day, if you know if you know your kid is a butthole when they come to school, they gonna change personality. They all do it, dude. You know that they are tripping. If I set a certain punishment or give a certain grade, you know I'm not giving it for no reason. I don't want your kid to be successful, right? You think I'm doing this job because because I want to? Yeah, I want to. But you think I'm doing this job just to just to get a check? No, it's a million things you can do, but I want to impact the community. I want to give back. And the last thing I want to worry about is a knucklehead kid disrupting the whole class. That's that's ridiculous. And and I think that a lot of people say it was the pandemic. But the pandemic did. I I I get that, but we were already on our way to what we are to now. And when people realize that, I get the pandemic. A lot of it was crazy. A lot of people passed. Whether you believe in whatever you believe in, politics aside, we were on our way to what we are in now. Yeah. And it's sad. And, And the thing about it is, I think that, and I know that if Trip is wrong in school, he's wrong. And if he's right, he's right. And I'm a mama. And that's my baby boy. But if he's right, he's right. And if he's wrong. And I'm not one of these parents like, I'm going to take up my, for my baby. I don't care. No. Mm -mm. No. Because you're not setting them up for success. Because in the real world, they don't give a flip. They don't care. Is that you're going to show up and be productive. If not, you're not getting a check, bro. And I'm setting up him for failure if I don't discipline him. If I and, I, and I'm sure it's going to be hard. I it's it's hard now. Dude, that's why I'm going back to like if you got kids and you want to call them at home, that's fine. But if you want if you want me to be the second parent to be a teacher, let me do that. Let me play my role. But you can't you can't do both sides. Dude. You can't. If you're a parent at home, I expect your kid to act a certain way when they come to class. They know how to be respectable. They know how to not pick on others. They know how to sit down. If you need to get up, go use the bathroom, like stretch your legs, I'll let you do that. But it's destructing class, throwing paper at people, playing pranks, laughing on your cell phone. That's just a different But story. I talked to a kid today about bullying. And I told her, I'm like, you're better than this. Like, you're... you're you're better than this. And she said, you know what, Miss Sarah? Because they call me Miss Sarah. I'm fine with that. Like, that doesn't bother me. All right. Miss Sarah, you're right. I said, I don't want to I don't want to talk to you anymore about this. Because you're better than this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're better than what you're doing. Right. And she said, you're right. Because some people, some kids, you know that. This is my last time getting talked to by 
for this. Yeah. And then some of them is yeah. like, all right, like, they're going to be here. They're going to be in this moment again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then that, that, then that triggers me, like, are they getting enough attention at home? Mm. Are they seeking attention? Are they getting love? Sometimes kids just want to feel something, even if it's, like, you yelling at them or writing them up or just talking to them. So I, I, I do come at kids with empathy to see what's going on. It's probably not all negative. Probably something going on. It's your job as a teacher is to dig a little bit deeper and show that empathy and not just try to be a, a disciplinary all the time. So I appreciate you, though, for that, Sarah. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> kids are going through. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, and, and, and the thing about it is mental health is so important right now. Oh, yeah, it's a big issue. Like, we're at a, I feel like we're more educated about it. Yeah, versus back and, uh, in the day. You know, it's to say, like, you used to go, Mom, I'm depressed. They'd be like, hey, go depress them dishes, like, stuff like that. I feel like now it's become a little bit more um, knowledge behind it. So, like, hey, what you depressed about? Like, I don't even know. So mm-hmm. that's that's where it get real deeper. Not depressed because I am i don't have clothes on my back or shoes on my feet. Actually, I got everything. So why are you depressed? I have no idea. That's something wrong. You need to get that checked. What's, what's going on? I mean, not trying to say, like, if you don't have enough, you can't be happy because mm-hmm. you can't be. Of course you can, but I'm just... I feel like it's, it's something deeper versus just trying to brush it off because you keep on brushing it off, it's going to eventually implode on itself or it's going to explode. So definitely got to get that checked with the mental health. And, it's, and it's like I, I, like, see the mental health um, counselor at our school and um, it's just like she's just in – she's just – doing what she can do. You know, I don't know her like that, but it's just like, it's so many kids that they're just surviving. Yeah. yeah it's tough now, man. It's, yeah. It's and tough. Then it's because you got like social media. You get, mm-hmm. It's just so, it's just so much. Like, I, I know I heard my mom, like, and my and my dad, they're like, we we didn't have cell phones. I'm like, well, how did you? But it probably was better off that way. Honestly, these cell phones, the, I mean, it's it's a blessing, and it's a curse. I mean, we gotta take the pros with the cons. I mean, you get the power of all the knowledge in the palm of your hand, but at the same time, when you're seeing people on Instagram or Facebook stunting, and they got you looking at your life and like, am I doing all right? Do I look good enough? And right. you got your second question of yourself. It's just, it's just way too much. So yeah, cut it off. Cut it off. I'll, I'll plot parents for taking cell phones. You need a break from it. Get get in touch with reality. See what's really going on. And so. see, and the, the, the thing about cell phones with, now they got that, what, Life 360? That? I sound old. What they got now? They got that Life 360? <laughs> they got the like 360 where they follow like wherever you can know where your kid is. And I'm like, I don't want to do that a trip. I'm not mad. But, no, I'm I not get mad. it. I get it. But Raymond, mad. think about us. Like, we didn't have that, and we were fine. It's a different day now, sir. It's a different day. I mean, day. I feel like they... I don't know. I'm not going to say that or what I want to th- say right now. But, like, do you want to do that a trip? I mean... You want them to have, like, what is it called? Light 360? Google it. Is that what it's called? Light 360? What is Light 360? They just, like, they know where you are... You don't want to know where your kid is at nowadays? I do, but, like, they should still be able to. Life 360 is a location sharing app that anyone can use. Parents and children can use it to track the yeah, grandma's family mean, members. Romantic partner can quickly see why their partner is running late from a work or an errand. Especially when his mother started driving, I definitely want to know where he at. But our parents didn't know where we were. Baby, it's a different. No, I get it's a different day, but it's just like, I think that he should be able to have independence until he hangs himself. It's too late then, because you home. <laughs> I just want to give my baby the benefit of the doubt. We can. I'm Why not, we got to do I'm not gonna say. I'm not going to say nothing. If we had a daughter, I'm would you do it straight saying, up? Yeah. You think it's different since we got yeah, a Yeah, she'd be lucky to leave the house. <gasps> but then when she get to college, she'll be like a a floozy. Online college, stay here. <laughs> stay with your daddy till you're 30. Go Ram, ahead. please. 
right man and then you just have a you know people that's one thing i appreciate about my daddy like i really do and i i, I think i told him this before he let me live he did like he didn't shout out to mr hunter man shout rob. out to my dad reverend, like, reverend rob <laughs> Sure. Like he didn't, he wasn't that parent that like since I was a girl he wasn't like you got and I wasn't out there either. You wasn't a floozy. I no, I was not a floozy. Shout, shout out to Sarah. For I was. I floozy. wasn't a floozy. You the only person I've been like you know. Shout out to Sarah. I know that's too much, but that's just true. Like and my dad he he said he said Sarah you never gave me a reason not to believe in you like what you told me and that, like either I was at your house or I was at Ma's house Day's house you know like Talia's house it, like that's Aaron like Misha like Nicole Sarah, you're one out of a million congrats but that don't mean that we should think that I don't know alright you want to transition to our sports section? <laughs> Just transition. All right, we transition to our sports section. Let's check Uh-oh. in on women's college basketball. We're going Sunday. SEC um, championship. We got um, we got South Carolina versus Tennessee tomorrow at four thirty. Who you got winning? We got who now? South Carolina, South Carolina and Tennessee. Yeah, I don't even know South Carolina. Know that South Carolina. She definitely put a program together. I, I'm proud. I'm so super proud of making her. Making South like, Carolina relevant. That's hot. Um, I, I'm proud of Don Staley. Yeah. Like I, I'm just proud of her. Yeah. She's doing it. awesome. Yeah. And she's a black lady. Yeah, she's doing awesome. She's and doing I, her thing. I'm proud of her. You know. She, she did her thing on the court, and she's doing her thing yeah, off the court. Yeah, she was on the court. So, yeah, that's, that's definitely, you know, shout out to her. And the next game we got, we got LSU who made it to the semifinals, and they're going to play Ole Miss or Florida. I can give you the score right now, the Ole Miss or Florida game. Ooh, it's a tight one. We got Florida 33 and Ole Miss 32. Who you got winning that game? Florida rank 11. Florida. Ole Miss rank third. Florida. I got my money on four to two. I'm predicting an upset. I like to see the underdog win. So hey, let's see Florida ball out. Yeah. Let's Hopefully they make it up to the, to the LSU game. So we going to the championship game. That's Sunday, right? Yeah, we'll be there. Oh yeah, it's nice. So we we're going, going in there. with uh Gigi. Yep. Shout out to Gigi. Shout out to Gigi, you know. She's a heck of a woman. She yeah, like she She make a lot of great baked goods. Oh man, and then she can pick up trip. Call and it. she's eighty three. Yeah, and Trip is a big baby. He's a big boy, and she, he, he can, he's Gigi, Gigi, Gigi. As shout out she, to them collard greens. Yeah. You know? Oh, collard greens are phenomenal. Oh, she put them that, but yeah, we went to the championship game Sunday. So watch out. We'll post pictures. Oh, talk about our um our Instagram and Facebook. You know, can people follow us? Yeah. So follow us at. Let's see. I'm still learning how to. You know, I'm not really tech savvy. Um. Tripping underscore with the Smiths. Can you spell that out for the for the um T R I P P I N G underscore W I T H T H E S M I T H S. All right, and please subscribe to our channel. Please on YouTube. What is what is it, sir? Um, YouTube.com backslash at Sarah Hunter is out. Just go to our Instagram and the link is there. Yeah. And shout it's out to lot. the people who already subscribe. I mean, we want to keep on doing this, but of course we need our audience. So each click, each share, each subscribe definitely means a lot to us. And we appreciate the people who already done that for us. And we're about to wrap things up, but we got some good people that will be on our podcast. Oh, yeah. um, some heavy hitters. Next episode, um, we'll have a great, Great person, and we'll keep you updated through um, our Instagram and Facebook, and we really appreciate y'all. And then, um, yeah, shout out to our producer Paul. You know what I'm saying? Paul, uh, Slim, Slim Meach. Slim Meach. I, I want to call him Slim Two G. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, shout out to our guy Paul, man. He, he helped us get this together. Yeah, got the mics, got the camera. You. 
And uh, he really um, helping us guide our vision. So shout out to him for hey, sure. Hey, book him. Photos, videography, everything. He, think, he's good people. Yeah, he does it all. I mean, home improvements. Uh, <laughs> <beats>. <laughs> home improvement. Damn. Hey, if you need an accent wall. <laughs> hey, shout out to Paul, man. man he, does he does it all. He does it all. But yeah, y'all, that's a wrap for Chipping with the Smiths. Sarah, you got anything to say? We good. Love y'all. Be blessed. Love y'all. Be blessed. Have a good night. Hey.